We're Owen and Ashling, and we've just spent the most amazing five months traveling throughout Thailand on a backpacker's budget. So we decided to make this video to give you an idea of what it is and what it costs to travel throughout Thailand in 2022. We also wanted to give you our top tips and tricks for saving money along the way and before you jet off on your adventures. for us didn't happen overnight and this has literally been a dream of ours for as long as we can remember. We have been preparing and saving for this trip for so so many years now so budgeting, watching what we spend and trying to find ways to save money has been part of our daily routine now for a long long time. So stay tuned to the end of the video where we'll talk about our monthly, daily and overall spend during our time in Thailand here and hopefully this will inspire you to pack your bags, start saving <laughs> and plan your trip to Thailand. So before we get stuck into the video, there's a few things we wanted to make you aware of. The first one being that our travels throughout Thailand started in Bangkok and a few places in central Thailand and then throughout all of southern Thailand as well. Unfortunately, we didn't go visit the north this time around because we are planning a separate trip there in a few months time. So this budget and this breakdown is based solely on central and southern Thailand and throughout Thailand, prices can really change depending on where you are. So we just wanted to make you aware of some of the locations that we've visited so far. The second thing we wanted to mention is that our travel style is budget backpacking. This means that we have a daily budget which we try to stick to as best as possible. We try to save as much money as we can when we're on the road and we we actually have a spreadsheet which keeps track of all of our spends when we're traveling as well. This is Owen's baby <laughs> and without it we would be completely lost so if you are planning to go traveling make yourself a spreadsheet update it every couple of weeks and you will be so so thankful it throughout your travels. I'm a bit of a numbers freak and I absolutely love it but honestly this is something that helps us massively stay on track and keep track of what we are spending because we're hoping to travel throughout Asia and the rest of the world for hopefully the next couple of years so we're trying to make the money that we have saved up for this trip stretch as long as physically possible. While traveling we break down our budget into four main areas, accommodation, spending money, transport, and additional big spends, which we'll come back to later in the video. So for us, having a fancy and really nice accommodation isn't a priority at all. Really, we're just looking somewhere that's safe to put our bags, somewhere cozy to put our head down at night, and somewhere we can call home for the next wee while. Plus, if we save money on accommodation, this means we have more of a budget to spend on different things like activities, day trips, and just general things whenever you're out and about and on the road. In Thailand, there are endless options of accommodation, no matter what your budget is. If you want to spend £200 a night, you can stay in some top class villas or resorts, but if you're more like us, you can stay in some budget accommodations for as little as £4 a night. So far during our travels, we have stayed in a lot of different styles and types of accommodations, but mainly we have been staying in bungalows, apartments, private double rooms and even a few hostels along the way as well, which we've actually really, really enjoyed. When booking accommodation, there's a few things that we do like to look out for, even though we say we're not that fussy. The first thing being is a place with a really nice view and an outside space that we can chill out and enjoy a morning coffee. Which leads me on to my second point, and that's a kettle. I know it sounds funny, but if you're like us and enjoy a coffee or two in the morning, coffees on the go can quickly add up. So this is an easy way to save a little bit of money every day. And the final thing is a fan or air conditioning, and that is a must. A lot of people here only opt for an air conditioned room, but we actually don't mind a fan room, and a lot of the time it ends up being a little bit cheaper. When looking for different accommodations, we normally use Booking.com and Agoda. These are two different very handy and useful apps to have and you can then compare the prices of accommodations through the two apps because the prices will vary depending on what platform you're using. Another good tip is to download the apps because a lot of the time you will get mobile only prices for different accommodations which will save you a bit of money in the long run as well. If you also consistently use the two apps, you can build up a lot of different and really, really good benefits. So for example, with Booking.com, we have a Genius Level 3, which means we get a lot of discount when booking accommodations through their app. And with Agoda, you can then get cash back when you book an accommodation that you can then use towards your next booking as well. And this is a great way also to save money. We aim to try and get our accommodation for around £10 a night. Sometimes it was more and sometimes it was less. But we're going to pop up our spreadsheet here on the screen so you can check out how much accommodation costs us in each location and for how many nights. But on average our accommodation worked out at just under £12 a night. 
So up next in our budget breakdown is spending money. And what all we include in this is basically just your day-to-day -day spends and any general costs you have along the way. So things such as food, water, drinks, clothes, toiletries, and anything you're picking up whenever you are on the road and you are out traveling. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is food. Food can massively vary in price depending on your personal preference, but we absolutely love Thai food. And when we say Thai food, we literally mean food that is served on the side of the road, out of local markets and little restaurants. Our rule of thumb is that if somewhere has plastic seats, is literally at the side of the road, has a non-English menu, and is a wee bit kind of dirty and grubby looking, you're in for a tasty, cheap and spicy meal. Most of the time we are eating a rice or a noodle based dish with some meat as well in it, and normally the prices are ranging anywhere from as low as 25 baht per meal, the whole way up to maybe 150, 200 baht per meal, depending on what you order and where you are as well, because the prices really do vary on location. We have treated ourselves to some Western food along the way as well such as pizzas burgers pastas but do expect to pay double in price for this and we have got some home comforts such as McDonald's and KFC. They are quite a bit dearer, but they are still cheaper than what you would pay at home. Water is something that you're also gonna find yourself buying an awful, awful lot of because it is roasting in Thailand and you really do need to stay hydrated as best as possible. And water can really change in price as well depending on where you're at. Sometimes we were buying big bottles of water for in around eight to 12 baht. And then when you go to some of the more touristy and more remote locations, you could be paying up to 40 or 50 baht for a big bottle of water. And if you go to a restaurant, you're normally paying in around 40 baht for a big bottle as well. But a wee tip we have picked up along the way is if your accommodation has a filtered water tap or a water cooler, buy yourself one bottle of water when you arrive and just continue to refill it out of the cooler or the tap in your accommodation and you will actually save yourself so much money on water because we have found we're buying at least four big bottles of water every single day and it does quickly add up whenever you're on the road for a really, really long time. And if you're like me and you enjoy a beer in the evening, expect to pay anywhere from 30 to about 60 baht for a small or a large beer out of the shop. And if you go to a restaurant or a bar, this price will automatically double as well. And if you're like me <laughs> and you don't like beer, cocktails can cost anywhere from 100 baht onwards. So yeah. do expect to pay a little bit extra. Yeah, so the shop's definitely the way forward in terms of saving money on alcohol. So one of our biggest regrets when coming to Thailand is coming with our bags so jam-packed. Once we got here, we realized how cheap the clothes, shoes, bags, and accessories really are. So we have treated ourselves to quite a few 50 baht t-shirts along the way. These are second-hand clothes, but we don't really mind this because after a while, you do have to throw out your clothes and get some new ones. You will also quickly find that the clothes you bring from home are not the clothes you want to wear whenever you are out and about here. You will want to pick up new stuff and your stuff from home, you may as well just leave at home to be honest. And that is definitely one of our top tips, come with an empty suitcase. So we're not going to get massively into things like toiletries, sanitary products and just knickknacks that you pick up along the way because these are things that you don't really buy on the daily and you only kind of have to pick up every couple of weeks really. But they are very, very cheap and we have found the shops such as a Big C, a Watson's and a Lotus, which are kind of like supermarket type of shops back home, are definitely the cheapest place to pick these up. So that's pretty much it for spending money and general costs that we have had along the way. And again, we'll pop our spreadsheet up here so you can have a wee look down. We have split it into different sections of where we stayed, how long we stayed for, and what our spending money was in these locations. But on average, our daily spend was in around £25 for the both of us, which we were very, very happy with. So up next we're going to talk about transport and we're not going to go massively into any depth here because it all does depend on your personal preference, your time frame and the journey that you're taking. But you would be so so surprised at how many options and how cheap it can be. The main types of transport that are available and that we have been using are public buses, minivans, trains and ferries to get to the islands. When you're traveling around Thailand there is loads of options to fly between different cities and different islands as well. But flights are something that we have personally completely avoided. The main reason for this is because of the cost of them. For example, you can fly from Bangkok to Koh Samui, and whenever we were actually checking these flights, they were in around £100 per person, and then you have to add your luggage on top of that. But we actually decided to get the overnight train from Bangkok to Suratani, then a mini fram from Suratani to Don Sak, and a ferry from Don Sak to Koh Samui. And our overall journey cost us in around £16 per person. So it's a big difference compared to a £100 flight. 
Plus, because it was an overnight train that we got, this meant we saved a full night's accommodation and we actually loved the train experience and it was so, so much fun as well. But in saying that, we do know that flights are a very easy option and if you are on a tight time scale and can't really afford to lose a few days here and there to traveling around and moving location, this is a really, really good option as well. And if you do get on the ball and you are prepared, you can get your flights far cheaper if you've booked them far enough in advance. The main way and the most fun way that we have been traveling around Thailand is by renting a scooter. We have loved the scooters here so, so much and they have given us so much freedom to go where we want, when we want and to see so much more. On average, we were normally paying in around 170 baht per day for a scooter rental. But the prices are normally anywhere from 150 baht up until about 250 baht for just your normal basic type of scooter as well. You can get big motorbikes, big scramblers and off-road dirt bikes, but we completely avoided these. Number one, because they were a lot more expensive. Number two, because Ashley didn't trust me in the bike as well and didn't feel safe on it, which is fair enough. And number three, you do need a certain type of license to drive a lot of the bigger bikes as well. And when you're trying to rent your scooters or your bike, don't be afraid to haggle the price a wee bit. And we have also found that the longer you rent your scooter or your bike for, the cheaper the price you will get for your overall rental. But if you're not too scooter confident, don't worry. There are endless options of taxis available here. The first few times that we got taxis, we actually used an app called Grab. This is super handy, super convenient, and quite like Uber back home. We have since found an app called InDriver, and this is a great way to save a little bit of money. Instead of paying a set taxi rate, you send all the local InDrivers in your area a price that you're willing to pay. They either accept that offer or give you a counter offer that you can then either accept or deny. And a lot of the time, this has worked out a lot cheaper than Grab, so we've been using InDriver for majority of our time in Thailand. So yet again, we're going to pop our budget up here on the screen for transport, so you can have a wee look down to see what all journeys we took, what mode of transport we used, and how much they cost us. This price, however, is based on the two of us, so if you are an individual person, you can just divide this price in half. We haven't included in this section our flights to Thailand, because we are going to come back to this closer to the end of the video. So that now brings us on to our final section, which is what we call additional big spends. And what we consider to go into this category is day trips, any big activities that you're doing, and visas as well, because that's something that you just can't avoid. To break this down a little bit further, day trips in Thailand can vary quite a bit, depending on where you wanna go, who you're going with, and how long you wanna go for. We went on three different day trips during our time in Thailand, and that was to Koh Sok National Park, the Similan Islands, and Maya Bay. So for the likes of the Similan Islands, the first quote we got for the trip was 4,000 baht per person, which we thought was quite pricey to be honest. So after spending a very short amount of time walking around the streets and pricing different ticket offices, we finally got someone to do the very same identical trip for 2,000 baht per person, which was a massive saving. So this is definitely a really good tip, is just walk around price all the different ticket offices and chaoses and you are guaranteed you will definitely save quite a bit of money. So another tip is do not book your trips online. Wait until you get there and literally just walk around all the different chaos, price what they are, see what they include and narrow down your options from there. This way has saved us so, so much money and up until a thousand baht per person. All of these day trips that we did go on were full day trips and I would highly, highly recommend any of them for anybody to go on as well. They were so, so good. We had so much fun and they were just absolutely amazing to be honest. And we will link our videos up here as well so you can check out all of the day trips that we did do. So the cheapest out of the three day trips that we done cost us 61 pound based on two people and the most expensive one that we done cost us just under 90 pound as well and that was also based on two people so the day trips really can vary in price depending on what you are doing where you are going and what type of trip you're looking to go on as well Thailand is a country that has endless options for activities as well. You can do so, so many different things. But the two main and big activities that we have done since coming out was a full week of kite surfing lessons. And also we completed our Paddy Open Water Scuba Diver Qualification, which was a full three days certified course. Both of these activities cost each of us 8,000 baht per person. And yet again, it paid off to price around. A cost that you just cannot avoid if you're hoping and planning on staying in Thailand for a significant length of time is visas. We were lucky enough that because we are Irish, we were able to enter Thailand on a 30 day visa exemption, which meant our first 30 days here didn't cost us a penny in terms of visas. But since that, we've had to extend our visas 
three different times, each time costing each of us individually 1,900 baht. So depending on what country you're coming from, your entry requirements might be different to ours, but we will link a website down below and on the screen here that you can check out your entry requirements for entering Thailand. And yet again, we will put our spreadsheet up here on the screen so you can check out how much our actual day trips cost, our fees, where we got them extended and how much we did pay, even though they were all 1900 baht, and also the cost of our activities and where we done them as well. So a few things we haven't included just yet as well are our pre-travel costs. So what we mean by this is things such as our flights, our travel insurance and your travel injections. For travel injections, a wee quick tip is that we have learned since coming here, if you get your injections in Thailand and in around the Bangkok area, you can get them an awful, awful lot cheaper than paying for them back home in the UK and Ireland. Something else that is definitely worthwhile looking into and worked a treat for us is travel hacking and travel credit cards as well. We have a few different ones and the main one we use is an American Express gold credit card. Basically with this card, you can build up points every time you spend on it and you can then transfer your points into airline miles into hotel discounts and car rental discounts and with this we were actually able to get a completely free flight to Thailand for one of us so this meant we completely halved our price off our flights to get here so in total both of us was able to get here for 270 pound so finally the moment of truth what did five months in Thailand cost two people we spent just over seven thousand pounds this worked out at one thousand four hundred pounds per month and on average a daily cost of 49 pounds we were absolutely delighted with this because before we came out, we set out to spend between 50 and 55 pound per day. So we cannot believe that we actually did it. Again, we just wanted to say that this is based on our style of traveling, which is budget backpacking. But we didn't feel like we missed out on anything at all when we were traveling and we had the time of our lives. You can check out some of our other videos from Thailand and see what all we got up to because we just had the most amazing time ever, to be honest. And it doesn't take a lot of money here to have a really, really good time. But do keep in mind, if you're coming for a party holiday, a drinking holiday, or a bit of a luxury breakaway, you will definitely spend a lot more than we did. So just remember that. So we really I really hope that this video has helped to break down what it is to travel through Thailand in 2022 and how much it costs. We really hope that this has helped at least one person out there and if you have any questions at all drop us a comment below or send us a message on Instagram we are more than happy to help. And as always if you've enjoyed the video we would really appreciate it if you give us a like, comment, subscribe whatever it may be and hopefully you'll follow along on our next adventures. And finally before we finish off we just wanted to share a few of our top tips that really helped us with saving before we jetted off and went traveling. The first one being prioritize where and what you're spending your money on. Number two, set yourself up a completely separate bank account for your savings and then in your other account you know exactly how much money you have to survive off until your next paycheck whether that's next month or next week. Number three, be prepared to make sacrifices along the way as well. Do you really need the newest pair of shoes, the latest phone, brand new clothes? Probably not and these are all great ways to save money as well. Number four, set yourself a time and a financial goal. Say to yourself at what date you want to be away and how much you want to have saved by that time and be tight on yourself as well. And number five and our final tip is just bloody do it. Start your saving literally right now if you are actually serious about going traveling because this is something that won't happen overnight and will take a long time with a lot of preparation and a lot of planning as well. But trust us, it is worth every single sacrifice you're gonna make and it is worth every single penny that you're gonna have saved up and that you will spend getting the best and most enjoyable experience of your life. So we know this has been long and thank you so much if you have made it to this stage in the video. We really hope you enjoyed and that somebody out there is going to benefit from it. We would love it if you subscribe to the channel, check us out again and join us for another video.